Iceland is not only scenic and stunning, it's powerful too. Geothermal power makes the land of ice hot and buzzy. And it makes clean electricity and heating for the Icelanders. I mean, you didn't really expect these juicy tomatoes to grow wild right between the geysers and glaciers. But not only Iceland is blessed, geothermal energy could power the world for generations to come. And the best thing is... We can uh, find geothermal energy in every place uh, on, the, on this planet. It's a sustainable alternative to fossil fuels for countries around the world. Indonesia sits on the ring of fire and it makes us having the biggest geothermal potential in the world. But it is still largely untapped and most people will never have heard of it and have no comprehension of what geothermal is. So how does geothermal energy work and why is so much of it still not being used? It's almost like an alien planet with all the lava fields and even the craters and, and things like that. What a description of Iceland. In fact, people there are very proud of how geothermal energy has changed the country. Iceland has moved from being a poor country, uh, primarily using imported oil and coal. Since then, we have transformed our energy system. And geothermal energy and renewables became for Iceland what chocolate and banking are for Switzerland. Since it creates heating for around 9 out of 10 houses and almost 30% of all our electricity. Even though this eruptive transformation took some time. Historically, of course, there were hot pools. People used it during the centuries to, to bath and clean clothes. Just like in other countries around the world. For example, in Italy. That's where the first experimental geothermal generator was set up in 1904 by an Italian aristocrat named Prince Conti. The power it produced lit up five light bulbs. The start of a geothermal energy revolution? Not really. The world wars absorbed technological capabilities and prevented the idea from spreading. Also, it was a, an entirely new idea, and people were not sure exactly how to make uh, money on this. Because unlike oil, steam couldn't just be sold in barrels. But hang on, let's start with a small 101 here. What is geothermal energy? Geo means earth, thermal means heat. Therefore, geothermal energy is heat from the earth. And the deeper you go, the hotter it gets. And this heat warms water that has seeped into underground reservoirs. You can drill to access it, or at the tectonic plate boundaries, the water breaks through the Earth's surface as steam or hot water all by itself. And if you're really clever, you can direct that into a turbine and generate electricity. And then, after using it... The cold water is pumped back into the Earth, and in, inside the Earth, it's heated again on the way to the producing valve again. So it's like a cycle of hot and cold water. An almost limitless renewable source that can be used for heating and electricity. Like in Iceland, where geothermal energy has become more and more important, it was pushed in the 1970s when the oil crisis hit the world and shook tiny Iceland as well. It was an oil embargo. And uh, as a result of the uh, energy crisis of the 1970s, the district heating effort was speeded up and um, almost oil, all imported oil was eliminated. A success story, but one that created new problems. It has been expanded very rapidly. And uh, today we, we have uh, the electricity consumption in Iceland is by far highest in the world per capita, and around 80% of it is used by energy-intensive industries like aluminium smelters. Of course, the energy used is green and renewable, but the country's appearance has changed with pipes and infrastructure visible. So it is a continuing, ongoing debate, you know, to, uh, as to how much uh, we should build of these uh, power plants. Nevertheless, countries around the world are learning from Iceland and are keen to use the technology back home. Anna is part of this selected group of engineers and scientists from more than 50 developing countries. 
They have all come to learn from Iceland's experience in utilizing its geothermal energy. And especially in Indonesia, this could be a game changer. Indonesia is an islands country, we call it archipelago because we consist of thousands of islands. They're located along the equator and on top of a ring of active volcanoes, the so-called Ring of Fire. Which is seismically active until now and it makes us having the biggest geothermal potential in the world. Approximately 29 gigawatts of potential geothermal power is spread across hundreds of locations on several islands, such as Java, Sulawesi, Sumatra and Bali. But how much is that really, 29 gigawatts? Well, in Back to the Future in the 80s, it took 1.21 gigawatts to travel through time. A crazy big number back then. 21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Today, 29 gigawatts can be expressed as the output per year of 29 medium-sized nuclear power plants or 12,344 wind turbines. That means potentially more than one-third of Indonesia's energy capacity could come from geothermal power plants one day. It's now still mostly powered by coal. 62% of our electricity comes from the coal. And then in Indonesia, we have this weak emission standard for coal power plant, and it makes the air pollution is going so badly here. That's why we need to change our uh, energy choice. And geothermal energy could be a smart choice. It is available uh, 24 hours per day, 365 days per year. In contrast to solar uh, on cloudy days or wind uh, when the wind doesn't blow. And as it is a clean technology, it could help decarbonize the power sector, not only in Indonesia, but in other parts of the world. Around 3 to 4 percent of global energy demand by 2050 could be supplied from geothermal, estimates say. However, today just around a quarter of the known potential around the world is being used. One reason is, it is not attractive to investors in the short term, because it takes years to develop. Once the operation is firmly developed and everybody is everything is running well, it is definitely a cash cow. You are making money left and right, but it takes a long time and people are impatient. Another problem is, geothermal exploration could trigger earthquakes. Not just the drilling itself, but removing the steam and returning the water can destabilize the underground. It's rare, but it can happen. And in Indonesia, there's also resistance because many areas are sacred. Local people think it is uh, it is really out of their mind if that holy place is uh, being drilled uh, to uh, get uh, geothermal energy. And since coal is still the top priority in Indonesia, it is hard to sell the idea of green geothermal energy. The local people who live close to the uh, region of, uh, of the uh, geothermal energy resources they don't talk about uh, climate change. They don't talk about green energy because the issue of green energy is not really popular in Indonesia. Not only will it take time to further promote the benefits of renewable energy, but the industry itself needs more time as well. We cannot drill deeper than about nine to 10 kilometers because then it's so hot that our drilling equipment will just melt. And that's why most of the geothermal potential will stay untapped for longer. Yeah, there may be 50,000 times all the oil and gas energy beneath the surface of the planet. Is it accessible? No. No, it's not accessible yet. It won't be accessible in my lifetime, maybe not in your lifetime, but eventually, someday, yes, possible. Let's wrap that up quickly. Despite some technological problems, geothermal energy seems to have great potential, not only in Iceland, but around the world. And if we've learned something from the Icelanders, it's that other countries could start promoting and investing much more into it. Because there it is, a great and clean source of power waiting to be used, right there. If you like our videos, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel.